Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware channel. I'm still working on that video with all the sound cards and in the meantime I did some digging around on the internet looking at stores and what sales they have and maybe they have something in the outlet or... And on there I found something, well, I said I wouldn't do anything with the AM3 Plus uh, motherboard anymore, but I did. I found an AMD FX4300. It was only 40 euros and I wanted to find out, well, how good does it score and how good is it? And at this moment I'm benchmarking it over there and I'm pretty curious. So what is it, what is it made of? And is it any good? Should you be able to game on it in uh, 2019? Let's find out. Okay, well, the release of this processor is almost seven years ago. It was released on the 23rd of October in 2012. It's from the PAL driver series of AMD, which was supposed to be a really good processor series, but in the end it was superseded by Intel's processors, which were way more efficient and better performance and for almost the same price. And what AMD did back then was they upped the frequency and they upped the voltage and you ended up with processors that got really hot and didn't perform that well. But uh, they dropped the prices a lot and they became a tad more interesting. The base clock is 3.8 gigahertz. Under full load it's 3.9 and half turbo it's 4 gigahertz, which is quite an interesting number if you compare it to the older 10055T that I have, which only runs at 2.8, 2.9 gigahertz. Uh, it has 2 uh, times 2 megabytes level 2 cache, 4 megabytes of level 3 cache, which is sort of normal from back then. It has a multiplier, which is unlocked. Let's take a quick look at the games and the benchmarks that I ran and compared to a more standard, more, sorry, modern standard for uh, this, uh, for games. Now, in order to get a good impression of the performance of the CPU, I ran some Cinebench tests. And to start off the Cinebench R15 test, I had to increase the speed of all the results in order to make it a bit more viewable. The R15 single core test was sped up by 2000% and the multi core by 1000%. In real life, the single core test took me 7 minutes, 7 minutes and 14 seconds to complete, and the multi core took me 2 minutes and 24 seconds to complete. Now, when looking at the results over here, and compared to the other CPUs that I have, you will see that it is so slow that even the Intel Q9650, which was introduced in August of 2008, which makes it almost four years older than this one, still outperforms it. The attempts that AMD made back then to get a decent CPU on the market clearly failed back then. Now the results for the Cinebench R20 test. Here too I had to increase the speed of the recording that I made in order to make it a bit more viewable. The single core was sped up by an amazing 5000% and the multi-core with 2000%. The time it took to complete the test of the single core was a staggering 20 minutes. I haven't seen a process that was so slow. For the, uh, for the dual core, sorry, the multi-core, which is dual core, it took nine minutes to finish. Clearly, Cinebench R20 isn't designed for these kind of processors, but okay, well, I could have thought of that before. The scores aren't, as you, uh, as you may predict, uh, so great. It's still the slowest in multi-core performance, but the single core performance is a bit better than the older CPUs. Call of Duty was playable under normal uh, normal settings when it was coupled with my 1080 Ti. Why did I use the 1080 Ti? Well, I wanted to make sure that the graphics card wasn't bottlenecking the scores, so I put in that, vi that video card uh, to get this performance. Under normal circumstances, I don't think that anyone that will buy uh, 
this kind of processor will have a video card with those kind of uh, performance statistics but still um, I wanted to be sure that the scores weren't down to the graphics card. Assassin's Creed Origins, uh, it wasn't really playable. The score stuck around for 43 FPS at an average. Well, that isn't a playable score when using, uh, uh, when playing a game, a first arrow shooter like Assassin's Creed Origins. So, um, no, you couldn't play this game uh, with this kind of processor. I've this is on normal settings. I've lowered the settings to very low, and even then, it wouldn't increase beyond 45 FPS. Now, the Division 2 ran surprisingly good. On normal settings, the game was at an average of 75 FPS. Well, that was sort of an amazing thing for me. The CPU was running at full load, as you can see in the top left corner, which uh, all the cores running at 100% during the entire benchmark run. But still, uh, getting a decent 75% on normal settings with this subprocessor was kind of a shock to me. Now, I did run into a lot of trouble with uh, the motherboard that I have and the VRAMs on near the CPU, which regulate the voltage to the processor, got really, really hot, which resulted into a black screen or death, uh, lowering of, uh, of speeds and everything in between. Um, I saw a video online, which I'm going to post uh, in the comments below. I'm going to post a direct link to that video about cooling those things the view is the mosfets uh, those are little copper things on which you can put on your motherboard and it helps you cool the vrams or the mosfets and helps you get more stable performance and i didn't really think it would do anything but it turns out it works quite good so if you uh, have the money and your motherboard is really over well it has it's getting really hot and your vrams or your mosfets aren't getting cooled enough this is the way to go only 10 euros online Back to the AMD processor. Uh, well, as the benchmarks, and we could almost see it coming, uh, this processor sucks. Uh, there's no other way to, uh, to put it. This is just a really bad processor. It, it's okay, it's seven years ago that this processor was introduced, but I have processors that are almost older and perform better than this one. Um, let's take a look at the Intel Q9650, which performs sometimes even better and is even older than this CPU. So, conclusion, can you game on this? Yes, you can game. Should you? No. Even though it's only 40 euros, it's too expensive. Save your money for a bit more and get a decent AMD Ryzen processor. Maybe the cheapest one. Game on that. Um, that's it for me for today for this short video um, I'm going away for a quick holiday and I'll be back as soon um, as possible. Thank you for now. Please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe.